Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. The natural state's largest Methodist congregation is planning to split. Executive Director Brian Swain tells us the church will separate into three groups. The reason why? Internal disagreements and differing interpretations of this Bible. This week, the Central Methodist Church signed off on a separation agreement. And while Central Church will remain a United Methodist Church, Genesis Church off MLK in Fayetteville will become its own independent non-denominational church. There will also be another non-denominational church named Christ Church. It's expected to open in June with services initially being held at the Fayetteville Town Center until the fall. Executive Director says the split is for the best and will cut down on internal conflict. Now, we did reach out to the Arkansas Conference of the United Methodist Church about this. Bishop Laura Merrill sent us a statement that reads, quote, I'm grateful that church members and leadership have been willing to work together to pursue futures for various faith communities in Fayetteville. We are excited for refreshed leadership and intentional openness to revival at Central United Methodist Church in Fayetteville. All right, before we get to other top news stories where you live, let's get a check of the weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. Zach, it looks like rain in the forecast. Yeah, it is in the forecast, Joe, as we go through a good portion of the day, especially through the first half of the day, best chance for showers across the majority of the area. And then we're going to start tapering it off from northwest to southeast as we go through the afternoon. By late afternoon, evening, we should really be drying out across the area. But cloudy skies, cool temperatures in the 50s, damp conditions as, again, we'll be tracking off and on scattered showers hit or miss just kind of across the region they'll be possible again especially through the first half of the day and then as we go into the afternoon those rain chances are coming down again late afternoon early evening we really start to dry out a few lingering showers off towards the southeast future track radar is doing a good job here picking up on the shower and drizzle activity across the area hanging on as we go through the day again off and on showers we don't have this one large shield of rain that we're tracking which we often do here's the perfect back edge of of it coming in kind of situation is just going to be up and down off and on again for the morning into the afternoon. Some drier air will start to come in to northwest Arkansas again around three, four, five o'clock. That'll continue off towards the southeast by uh, early evening. We'll be drying out across our southern Jones, Scott, Logan, Johnson County into Pope County as that drier air gets into your area. Temperatures will settle in the colder 30s, low 40s overnight. Uh, scattered clouds. If we can get some light winds and some clearing, we'll have a chance to see some patchy fall try to get going in a few spots. We'll be watching that for you first thing Friday morning. Joe. All right. Thanks so much, Zach. Well, after weeks of debate and discussion, the Arkansas Learns Act is now law. The governor signed her signature education reform plan surrounded by legislators and families. Governor Sanders spoke on the new look. You'll see Arkansas Learns give education in the natural state. Spanning 145 pages, the bill encompasses topics from teacher pay to critical race theory, school choice and school safety. Now, the Democratic Party of Arkansas very quick to respond after the bill signing ceremony with the party chairman saying the governor will have to defend the Learns Act in court with attorneys already at work on a lawsuit. With the signing of the bill, many, though, are still concerned for the future of the state's education. Five News reporter Jose Carranza shows us how some worry this bill could potentially clash with a decades-long constitutional ruling. With the signing of the Arkansas Learns Act bill, Many applauded Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders for the omnibus education bill. But being 145 pages and covering multiple topics, advocates are still concerned. I understand she wants to be the education governor, and I certainly welcome um, the focus and emphasis on education. Um, but as, uh, as is probably clear, I've had some concerns with the legislation throughout the process. Olivia Gardner is the Director of Education Policy for Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families and says she is concerned about the creation of education freedom accounts. She says it could violate the Lakeview District decision, which was a 15-year process that had involvement from the Supreme Court, causing the state to revamp how they funded schools. Any movement with public money flowing away from public schools draws into question for us, will there be enough funding left to make sure that public schools are adequate and equitable enough to meet that constitutional mandate? Before the Senate passed the bill on Tuesday, Senator Frederick Love emphasized that a voucher program was previously created after Brown versus Board of Education. He says it segregated schools and Gardner tends to agree, saying she voiced her concern to committees that a tiered system could be created. 
where we have folks on one side who can afford to make up the difference to still attend private school or who already are attending private school. And then on the other side, folks who still won't be able to afford it, even with the Education Freedom Account funds, folks who live in rural areas or folks with disabil families with disabilities. Another thank you to Secretary Oliva. You're not just the guy who had to help write this bill. You're also the guy who's going to get to put it into practice. Your work just got started. Now with the signing of the bill from the governor, it now moves to the Department of Education, where they'll put together working groups of educators to develop rules. This work isn't over yet. There are still, like I said, many ins and outs about the Learns Act that will be decided, that are being decided still. This legislation is this is not done yet. It's really just beginning. Covering news where you live, Jose Carranza, 5 News. And in other news, the Salem Springs Board of Directors voted to fire the city administrator. They voted 7-4 to four last night to remove Philip Patterson from the position. After the vote to remove him, they selected the city's finance director to serve as Salem Springs' interim city administrator. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State lawmakers voting unanimously in the House to pass Andy's Law. It's named in honor of Andrew Free, who died in 2020 while wakeboarding. The broken arrow child died of open-air carbon monoxide poisoning on Lake Eufaula. If signed into law, the bill would require boats to have warning signs posted about the dangers of open air carbon monoxide poisoning. It now moves to the state Senate. Well, thank you for joining us here today for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. Make sure to tune in again tomorrow right here for more. Have a great day.